Scripting is a feature in Plainly that allows you to control the duration of your output video or to easily shift around layers in time based on a set of layers or one specific layer. To add scripting capabilities to your layers inside of Plainly, all you have to do is go into your parameterization tab and once you find a layer that you want to add scripts to, um, simply go ahead and click on it and find a scripting tab here on the right and just add a new script. There are quite a few scripts that we have in Plainly and this video is going to focus on the main ones such as crop, shifting and spread because these are the ones that are being used the most and the rest of the scripts work on the same principle anyways. I'll start this tutorial in, in After Effects because that's going to help you connect the dots uh, even better. And the first script that we will go over is the crop script because that's the one that is being used the most. Crop script allows you to link the duration of your output to an asset that you are dynamically adding in the rendering phase. In practical terms, this means that, for example, if you have a placeholder video that is 30 seconds and then during the rendering, you give plainly a video that is 12 seconds, what would happen if you didn't add the crop script is that the rest of the video would be just a black screen until those 30 seconds. But if you add the script, what that's gonna do is it's gonna cut the video at the end of the, you know, the asset you swapped out in the rendering phase. In order to add a crop script to your video, all you have to do is go to your parameterization tab basically the list of layers you have in your uh, rendering composition and then find the layer that is going to control the duration of the final result. In this case, this is um, this source video, which if we go to After Effects, you will see that this is actually a 30 second video and that is the only video, that is the only layer in this composition. But let's say we have a lot more layers on top of, of this layer. Let's say we have some text, some transitions and all that good stuff. But we want to make sure that the result is always the same duration as this source video. In order to add the crop script, all you have to do is go ahead, click on this layer, go to scripting tab, add new script and add crop and then just select end here. Now I'm not gonna do that here because I already did that and you'll see that besides the display name and the parameter name, I also have the script crop end here. So let's see what is gonna happen when I render this video. I'll just go render and then I'm gonna provide a video that is about 10 seconds here. Click render. All right, this video is now done and if we take a look at the video we're gonna see that it's actually 13 seconds but if we take a look at the placeholder we'll see that it's 30 seconds so the crawl script actually did its job the second thing I want to show you in this video is uh, what's gonna happen if your video to which you're applying the crop script is nested. So this is a very common use case where let's say you have a video that is inside of a pre-composition like this one. And if you add a crop script to this source video as we did in the previous example, what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna just cut the pre-composition. So if we swap out this video with a 10 second video, that's not gonna cut the output video, the final result, that's actually gonna cut the pre-composition. And that is happening because the crop script is cutting the parent composition of the layer to which it's being applied to. So the source video composition is the parent composition to this video. So in order to actually cut the final video and get the results get the result you want you actually have to also apply the crop script to the source video composition itself so let's see how to do this in plainly so this is the rendering composition that is related to this composition here and if i go to edit i can see that i not only have the crop script to the video layer itself but I also have the crop script to the source video because source video is actually um, contained in the rendering composition or the rendering composition is the parent composition of this source video composition. And that is why 
um, you also have to add the crop script to it in order to cut the final video. The next thing I want to cover is the shift in script and shift in script is awesome. It allows you to shift layers um, in time based on a duration of another layer. So let's say we have a video, which is 30 seconds. And then after that, we have a outro composition. If we didn't have the scripts, and let's say you swap this video with a 15 second video, what would happen is you will be left with a blank screen until the outro composition begins. Well, with the shift in script, you're able to move the in point, which is the start of this layer or a composition to the end of a reference layer, which in this case is the video. And if you combine the shift in script with the crop script, you're basically able to also cut the final video like this. So on a practical example, if we go back to plainly, this is how it looks when it's all set up. So we have no scripts on the video, but the video is actually a dynamic layer because we want to swap it out dynamically. But on the outro comp, which is this composition, which contains this text and a black background, we have two scripts and those two scripts are shift in, which is referencing the video as a shift target. And then it says shift to out point. Now that means that this outro comp is going to shift in, which means it's going to start at the out point of the video layer. Okay, that is pretty simple. And then we also have the crop script, which is going to basically cut the output, cut the final result to the end of this layer. So once it moves to, let's say 15 seconds, it's actually going to cut the video. One thing I want to highlight is that the order of the scripts is very important. So it's very important to apply the scripts in a correct order, because if you don't, you will get, um, you won't get the results you want because plainly executes script in the order they are added. So just think for a second, how would you cut the video? How would you edit the video if you were doing this for yourself? Basically like I did here. So just go through the scenario once in order to figure out what is the order of the scripts that needs to be done. So for example, um, just go through like a, a mini exercise in your head. Okay, we swap out a video, then the video is 15 seconds, then this video, this composition needs to move to the end of this video, and then the um, the final video needs to be cut. So it's shift in and then crop. And if you just do that little exercise, you will know how to set up these scripts. So let's see what ha what's happening once we render this video. So we are now in the rendering form for this video. As you can see, it's scripting example, it's shifting. And as a parameter for the video, all I'm adding is a 10 second video. And if I click render, let's see what is the result going to be. So as you can see, this video is done. And if we check the result, we can see that it's actually 28 seconds. And what happened is plainly swapped out the video, the placeholder video, um, which is about 13 seconds, I think. Yeah. And then the outro composition started and it went all the way to the end. So if we take a look at our placeholder or our composition in the template, you can see that the placeholder video is actually 30 seconds. And then the outro comp is, is 15 seconds. So that leaves us with a 45 second video. And the last script I want to cover in this video is the spread script and the spread script works like this. So let's say we have an example where you have five images and that's the whole um, video. But in some cases you just want to send two images for rendering. In some cases you want to send four images and in some cases you want to send three images. Basically, um, five images is the maximum amount of images you will be sending. So in those cases, spread script comes in very useful because you are able to basically say to plainly, all right, we have up to five images. I'm going to send anywhere between one and five images in the rendering phase. Please turn off the images that you're, you don't receive assets for and spread the rest of the images 
to these 10 seconds. In practice, this is the same template inside of Plainly. And if we go into parameterized layers, we will see that all of the five images are set as dynamic layers. And then we have a spread script, spread layers script to the spread composition, which is basically the rendering composition here. So let's see what happens when we render this video. So what I did here is I provided data for just three images, leaving the fields for image five and image four um, blank, which means that the result should be just three images spread around 10 seconds. All right, the video is done. Let's see what's the result. As you can see, this is the first image. This is the second image. And this is the third image. And as you can see, the crop script actually executed because we are only seeing the three images and they are around 3.3 seconds in length. This spread script is actually very useful when you have loads of images, but you're not sure how many images you will send in the uh, rendering phase. And this way you can make sure that you know, you're, you're spreading the images and the result always looks the same.